Welcome back to Open Line, talking with elder law attorney Tim Takis about caring for a loved one, some of the challenges associated with that, ways that um, those things can perhaps be helped. Um, and I always like talking about wills, yes. okay? This is always one of those fascinating discussions. Mm -hmm. This tears families apart. There they are mm -hmm. countless um, examples of families just fighting over this stuff, and it, and it could have been solved with a, with a, a will. Right. Or, or at least a well thought out estate plan. Yeah, I mean, like we were talking about just you know before the last you know about the you know the family that came in and they have they ha own this own this property this bank accounts together. I mean, they were somebody told them that they needed to do that, and sometimes it's the bank. In fact, that same family told me that they went out you know that they were opened up a checking account and they wanted the they wanted a they wanted to add the children's names to the account. They wanted a joint account. Right. That's estate planning. I mean, property passes more than just by will. It passes by operation of law, which means if you die, like if, like if the, way, the way property is titled. If you own property as tenancy by joint tenants with right of survivorship, you know, if, the, if you die, then your, your interest in the property, whether it's a bank account or real estate, goes to the surviving owners. You know, that's estate planning if you're doing that. You know, so a lot of it is is like making sure you have a well thought out estate plan and knowing how property passes at the time of the death. Mm -hmm. You know, wills are important, but more and more we're seeing is is that it's not so much property being passed by will, but property passing by other ways. Beneficiary designations on life insurance policies, retirement plans, that's the way also real pop, uh, title to property passes all those sorts of things and there's a myriad of different ways in which people mess that up <laughs> a myriad of ways know. and so <laughs> we see probably most of them but uh, yeah so th these can be pretty terrible battles can't yeah. they mm -hmm. and and so what do you recommend to avoid that i guess do a will certainly have some yeah a will or a trust or some sort of estate planning to give you an example this after, you know it's kind of funny because uh, see tuesday is our estate planning day we see a lot of estate planning clients on tuesdays so a lady came in to see me and she's she's been widowed for a long time and she she's got one child and she dislikes her son's wife <laughs> he know she just is convinced that um She's like the you know the the worst thing ever, mm -hmm. and so she's decided that she wants to um, do a different t estate planning just to, uh, just to give everything to her son, her only child. Okay. And one of her questions was to me is is that well what if he finds it or he and his wife finds it where it leaves it to him and his and their chil and their children instead of just to him? What if they find it and they tear it up? Yeah, I mean part of that is is how do you know? Right, right. You know, and so one of the things that I counseled her about was is that, well, you're going to have a trustee that's going to be in place for your grandchildren, so make sure she knows that you have an estate plan in place so that if you do pass away, she can go looking for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be a good question. What you know, if, yeah, really, what if I mean, it was a good question. And, and she's also going, you know, I, I have a lot of jewelry which I want to make sure gets distributed in certain ways. I've got it in my lockbox. How do I know that? you know, it's going to go where I want it to go, to my grandchildren. What if, you know, my son's wife, because that's what she's thinking, you know, is going to scoop it all up and put it in her, you know, her, her jewelry case or whatever. You know, and, and I told her the same thing is, you can write it out on a separate sheet of paper who you want, who you want to get certain items. That's kind of like the Altima <laughs> right, on, right. on the envelope, only it's for personal, personal property, your stuff. I told her to write out a, on a, a sheet, of, have one sheet of paper for each beneficiary and say, I give this, 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 and this, you know, to this grandchild, and she signs it and dates it. As long as it's in her own handwriting, you know, it's, it has the effect of a will. And so let's say... And I, say, and I said, send, send a copy of that also to your trustee. To your trustee, okay. You know, so, so the trustee who is a family member but not immediate family, so that person will know you know, that she has an estate plan in place that includes these things so that if down the road, you know, when mom, you know, when the, when the client dies, you know, then that at least she might have some possibility, you know, that her wishes will be carried out. So the client dies, the client wants to disinherit, um, I guess, a son because of who the son married. Right. Um, but then let's say those two say, the client over here wasn't in her right mind, mm -hmm. you know, right. and, and I challenge the will. Right. 
And so how effective are those kind of things? They're not very effective. Um, those are very difficult cases to prove because you don't have to have much uh, what's called testamentary capacity mm -hmm. in order to, to make a will. Okay. You can be very, just for instance, just because you have a diagnosis of dementia or Alzheimer's or something does not preclude you from doing that. You know, you have to be really far gone. You have to know the objects, what's called the objects of your bounty, your family. You have to have some general idea, you know, of what the value of your estate is. You know, and you have to have a reasonably clear mind when you, you know, you make this, you know, when you, when you make these dispositions in a will. And it's certainly if you go through an attorney, hopefully, then part of the attorney's job is to kind of go through that with you, to ask the right questions, to make sure that you understand, or help you understand, you know, and basically to identify whether or not you're able to have, whether you have testamentary capacity. And the one that I guess comes up most often is when a I guess a, a father remarries mm -hmm. and and then all the money goes to the wife and the kids are left out there yeah. with nothing and they're mm -hmm. all upset yeah and oh, how yeah. how tough is that well that's almost one of those things that you the only way that you probably your possibility there is you'd have to try to prove undue influence oh the new wife unduly influenced you know her husband you know to to make a will leaving everything to her mm -hmm. well that's gonna be a hard one that's what people do, right? <laughs> right. They right. get married, you know, and they leave stuff to their spouse. Yeah. You know, and maybe they think that their spouse will either predecease them or, or, or do the right thing or something like that, but those are really hard cases. Now, they do come up where, you know, where the, you know, where somebody's trying to prove that, well, Daddy had an existing estate plan for years and years, and he was going to give everything to us. But six months before he died, this is what happened, and then everything wound up in her name when Daddy died because Daddy was terminal. I mean, all those, you know, it's kind of like those are those are fat cases. And you know, they they do they smell bad? Right. Do they feel bad? You know, so that's they're very fact-driven cases. And are you surprised at how many people don't have a will? I mean, or do you feel like most people do? I mean. Where, where do you think we are as far as just doing wills right now? Uh, I'd say probably about half. About half? Yeah. So that's, that's is that a problem? Well, it, the, the major problem comes if you're trying to do something that is, I, I won't call out of the ordinary, but the norm is, is that you leave everything to your spouse. Right. Or if you have no spouse, you leave everything to your children in equal shares. And that happens whether you have a will or not. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, but the question then becomes, how do you have property titled, like the gentleman that, you know, has the bank accounts, $100,000 bank accounts titled to himself and his, three ch his two children? He's just hope that they're all hoping that he dies first, but if, he do if one of them dies first, then that kind of upsets that estate plan. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and that's where you start having conflict. Mm -hmm. You know, where now suddenly the daughter goes, one daughter goes, um, or her children go, well, what happened to uh, our, our, our mother's, you know, share? Well, that went to your, that went to your aunt. That's the, way your, that's the way your grandpa wanted it, that sort of thing. Right. You know, and that's kind of what you, you know, and that's why it's important to do it, like I said, the right way. All right, we're going to take a break. Uh, come back. We'll basically wrap everything up, take yeah. a break, though, and be back right after this.